our presenter today is Maria Spicer Escalante, and I just met her during lunch. She is an associate professor in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. She received her PhD in Applied Linguistics at the University of Illinois, Urbana Champagne. Champagne. <laughs> she is an assistant associate professor in the Department of Languages, Philosophy, and Communication Studies. She served as co-director of the Master of Second Language Teaching Program since 2010, and she is also in charge of, her, of the future foreign languages teachers. Her professional interests include English as a foreign language, teacher preparation, uh, pedagogical aspects of second and dual language acquisition, bilingual writing, and Dr. Spicer Escalante has published a textbook and a workbook as well as several articles on the area of teaching preparation. So we are glad that she's here and anxious to hear what she has prepared. Um, for her sake, it would help if you moved together a little closer. It's okay. Otherwise, we'll turn it over to her. Wow. Well, thank you. First of all, thank you for coming. Tell me if I need to adjust something, if my voice is too loud. I said that I don't need the, the microphone because I want to start singing. And there are things that I do really bad in life, but the worst things are uh, singing and ironing. And my husband says that my ironing is better than my singing. So you don't want me to sing, you know? So thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to, to talk to today about this uh, self-assessment of teaching um, uh, statement. And it's something that I have been working on for the last two years. So um, let me see if that works. No? It doesn't move. Yeah, it's on. Oh, it moved? Oh. Okay, very slow. So uh, I'm going to talk about the motivations for the SATS model, is the self-assessment, self-assessment of teaching statement. Uh, the research um, that um, is, has been done in, in other areas. I'm going to talk about the procedures and uh, some examples. I have two examples from myself and, and two more examples from my grad, from some of my students. And the feedback from practitioners, and this is uh, from uh, grad students and student teachers. I have here two of a grad student here and a student teacher, and some of the so, some faculty members and some members um, of the promotion, the promotion. What is promotion and tenure and promotion committees? Okay, and I'm going to talk also about some impl implications and the future uh, projects that I have. And also, I, will, I hope I have some time to talk about some of the warnings that research uh, tells us. Okay, before, before we start, I just would like you to take a minute to think about these questions. And we don't have time for all the questions, but just think about what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses as teachers, and um, what is the best feedback you have ever received? I would like us to take a minute for this, uh, the best feedback that you have ever received. Someone, a volunteer or a victim, whatever you want. It's up to you. What is the best feedback that you have ever received? Yes. OK, good. Someone else? Come on, I'm sure that you, if you look at your evaluations, you will see tons of beautiful uh, comments. Yes. Good, something else? Okay, the worst feedback you have ever received. I will tell you. Once, um, I was teaching in an institution that I don't want to remember, but anyways. So they came and visit, uh, visited my class and they said, you call only on men. You didn't call on, you call more on men than on women. I said, no. And yes. So next day, I went to the classroom, and I didn't call on any, any men. And they were like, here, here. I said, just women, just women, just women, you know? So just to balance the thing. But what is the worst feedback you have ever received? No? Oh, yeah, yeah, you walk around too much, something else. I talk too much, 
I'm too loud. I'm, ro I'm rushing, you know. No. Too loud. And, and this question, um, what aspect would you like, if somebody comes to observe your class, what would you like them to see? What, like, like when, when they come to my class, I would like uh, my observers to see that I'm having a good rapport with my students, that I'm clear, that even if I rush and my voice is too loud, I still try to incorporate everybody, that I don't call only on men, that I call on everybody. Uh, what would you like them to see? All the effort that you put into your class, right? Because, yeah, that students are engaged. Something else? Yes. Passion. Good. Something else? No? Yes. Exactly. You know, uh, I will talk about uh, somebody came to my class and said that my class was too structured. That is a negative thing. We will see it. We'll see it in a second. So come on, you know, give me, really? Anyways, so uh, what is the motivation for this? Several motivations. As a university professor and uh, as a university student teaching supervisor and uh, uh, co-director of the Masters in Second Language Teaching. And also, I, I use it because it's a model that has been um, used in other, in other areas. So, you know, when we, when we go for promotion or for, for tenure or for promotion, one of the, we all have to have peer evaluations, right? And the provost office, I don't know if currently they say that, but they have mentioned that the, all peer evaluations are very positive. And they don't say anything against the candidate, right? So, well, it, they are love, love you letters, right? So, if I go to observe her and there are some aspects that I don't like, I cannot tell her that I don't like her teaching because then I'm a bad colleague. And I think that they put us in a very difficult position. Don't tell the provost that I said that. Please, Kevin, don't say that. But I think that, uh, okay. So as a candidate for promotion, and this is what I'm preparing for my promotion as a full, and also as a member of the, of the uh, promotion committees, I don't know if all of you were before in the, in the keynote speaker this morning, but she said, I'm not going back to any traditional classroom. I'm going to do just flipping class, right? I'm not going to write a love letter anymore. If, if the, the persons in, in whose committees I am a member, if they don't want to use this model, I'm not writing a love letter. So I have encouraged all people in, in whose committees I'm serving to use this model. If they don't use it, I won't, I'm not going to write the letter because deep down, who is the person who needs to improve his or her teaching? The teacher, right? And this model serves for that, right? And uh, as a mentor in the new faculty uh, teaching academy, I have used that also for two years, and some other people have used it, right? And I have used it with the student teachers and the grad students. And oh, 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 I'm too fast. This is crazy. <laughs> Kevin, this is crazy. So for some reason, it's a model that has been used mainly on, on health area. And I don't know why. So I'm trying to use it now with languages and with other, with other disciplines. But when you look at self-assessment or self-practitioners or reflective practitioners, wherever you look, you will see that most of them have been in math, in different in sciences, and a lot in, on health. For example, in, in Scotland and in England, it's a big thing. So what I do, before, before I invite somebody to my class, I follow, the, um, I follow these steps. So before the observations, I send the syllabus. And I sent a lesson plan. And if you see here, I highlighted the minutes of every single activity. Don't, don't worry. If you need those materials, let me know, and I will be happy to, to provide them to you. And I also sent um, uh, an observa uh, uh, observation form. And I have moved this a little bit, so things that I like. And then for some reason, I just put this here, 
three things that I will do differently if I were the teachers, the teacher, and uh, the general recommendations. So when they come and observe my class, they have the syllabus and they have the lesson plan and they have electronically all these materials, um, the observation form, and they can either write down on the observation form or they can uh, give me the feedback later. I don't mind, but um, so up to, do you have questions so far? No? Okay. Um, then I videotape my class. I videotape myself. And before I read my colleagues' feedback, I take notes on the good things, you know, so, so I watch the video, and then I say, these are the good things that I did according to the syllabus, according to the lesson plan, those are the things that I accomplished, and these are the things in which I still need to, to work, right? And then I read my colleagues' feedback. I send them an email and I said, okay, okay, I'm ready, send me your feedback. And once, once I have everything together, I put it together and I write the observation, the statement. And, and I have two examples here. So once the, the form is ready, I submit it to all members, to everybody who observed me to see if I'm missing something, if I need to add something. But the responsibility is on me, is not on the observers. So everybody loves this. Yeah, all my colleagues love, the, love this because I'm the one who, who does the work. And I'm the one who needs to improve her teaching, right? So um, I get the positive aspects. And for example, in this, in this specific class, uh, students were engaged and they were familiar with the, with the material. Uh, I designed very, very clear um, questions. Oh, I thought that. You, you know, so I, different types of input, you know, body language, you can see here my body language. You are supposed to laugh, you know, <laughs> so you, you are too, too quiet today. You know, and I, obviously, I design all my activities are student-centered, so the focus is not on me, it's, it's on my students. So these are the positive aspects. But I have uh, still a long way to go to be perfect, right? So some areas of improvement, and this is based on my feedback and my colleagues' feedback. So I, did not I didn't consider that some of the activities would take more time, so I rushed a little bit uh, the activities. Um, and although this, the discussions were very interesting, I had to cut them to go to the next one. And at the end, as usual, I ran, I ran out of time. That is my biggest that is my biggest problem. I, I start very slow. No, not very slow. No, I'm not slow, but I, I just don't have time. But I fulfill all my, my um, learning objectives. So um, let me see. So this is, this is the, this is, oh, oh, oh. you see, it's too, it's too fast. I don't know why. It's done. I think that I'm done. I'm done. No, 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 I'm not done. OK, this is the first one that I did. Um, this was a year ago, the, almost uh, more, uh, more than a year ago, a year and a half ago. So this was the first attempt. And um, hmm, it's too fast. I'm sorry. So I have an introduction on the context, the positive aspects here, the areas of improv improvement, the general comments. The recommendations in the next page, if, yeah. So um, here I uh, reproduce some of the, the comments from my colleagues, the recommendations and the areas for improvement and a CC for my two colleagues, right? So this was uh, the first one that I did, right? And this is the second one. When I, when I started to do the second one, I said, you know, no, 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 no. It would be better if I ask one, a group of colleagues to come to observe me once, and the following year, I improve the areas that I needed, and I, and I invite them again. So I wrote the second observation teaching the same class with different observers, the same class improving, improving, the, 
improving the, the areas, right, in which I need it. So this is the last example, and you can see that I improved. I, this was uh, uh, struggling learners in the dual language classroom, and here are the, the people who observed me on April 14 and on March 15, and this is what I did. So uh, these are all the suggestions from my colleagues and my own, my own suggestions. You can see here that some of the suggestions, one of my colleagues really told me that my classes, my less, it was too structured. But that gives me the opportunity later, not now, but later, to respond to this because research shows us that if you have clear objectives, if, you're less, if your activities are structured, students learn much more, right? And talking about the Bloom's taxonomy that we saw this morning, that is what research says in all areas. It doesn't matter if it's linguistics or math or whatever, right? But in the future, I'm going to address this, but in the future, not now. So these are my, my own suggestions. So I improve all this. And I had a, another group of people who came in uh, 2015. But still, I had some suggestions. So this is what I, what I did. I talk about my preparation. And these are very all the things that I did correct, that I wanted to, I want, that I wanted to highlight, right? The, and um, for this specific class, I wanted to talk about the empathy activity that I did. And uh, I use a T-chart with a visible and invisible um, things that we know about second language uh, acquisition. And the students did a think, pair, and share activity. But still, I fell short on something. Uh, you know, I tried to incorporate everybody. I tried to draw opinions from all my students, but still, I, 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 I fell short at uh, including everybody. And I, I noticed that when I look at, when I watch the video, and some of my observers did that, that I don't, in, that I don't include everybody, you know? So the feedback from practitioners, as I said, I have uh, grad students, student teachers, and, te and professors in other areas. So this is one of my students from last year. And this is another student just recently from this. This is a lesson plan for one of the Spanish teachers. This is about dates and how you plan a date in Spanish. And um, I got feedback from all these grad students and from uh, professors in other disciplines. In fact, this is, um, I don't know if you know him, uh, Francois Denec. I was the mentor, and his mentor. And he came to visit my class, and everything that I did, he replicated in a class with 180 students. So these are the, these are the pictures that I took when I went to observe his class. And he did everything that I did in terms of uh, walking gallery, the jigsaws, all the, all the strategies that I use in the classroom, he used them with this 180 class. It was a beautiful class. So some of the feedback, and we are not going, I'm not going to read all this, but I just want to highlight some of the, some ideas, you know? I ask everybody who has been involved in this, what have you learned from observing others and from observing you, you yourself, right? So there are several things. Oh, I finish again. Kevin, doesn't work. Okay. So... Um, this morning, uh, the keynote speaker, and I cannot remember her last name. Kurtz, yeah. She said that she doesn't, she doesn't like to listen to herself. I hate my accent, too. Uh, that is the worst thing. I, when I listen to myself in a video, is oh, I'm always afraid because I have an accent. I think that my teeth are too too strong, and I say portfolio every single time, right? <laughs> Instead of portfolio, she says, no, you say portfolio, and I say, no, I say portfolio, and she says, you said it again. <laughs> yeah. So everybody, everybody hates watching himself or herself in a video, right? Um, 
uh, but they like the, the feedback that they receive from colleagues, um, how difficult it is to apply all this. And um, well, I think that observing yourself helps you to uh, improve a little bit. And I really like this. Uh, one of my students said, I would like to see a video of myself when classes go wrong. I would like to see a video of myself when classes go wrong too. Because so far, believe me, classes have been wonderful. Mood and I keep it down and it's so cool, you know. But it seems very good at the surface, then you see and, uh, my thick accent and everything, right? But anyway, so um, I want to continue working with this. In fact, um, we are going to present this in a, I have presented this in several, com in several uh, venues and we are writing a paper with one of my colleagues. We are writing a paper on this. And I, and I have here two students who are going to be in Spain. Tempe is going to be, she's going to do an exchange in, she's the first graduate student in an exchange endeavor in Spain. And um, Jessica is going to observe her. So I invited them because I want them to do this. Tempe is going to be teaching English in an elementary school. She's, she, she has a license and she's doing the master's in second language teaching with us. And I want to place her in the dual immersion classroom. So it's great that she's going to be teaching English in Spain. And Jessica is going to Spain to improve her Spanish. Her Spanish is beautiful, but she wants to boost her Spanish. So I hope they can do this model while they are in Spain this fall. So that's why I invited her. And, um, and we call this across campus, as I said before, you know, if I am a member of your committee, I'm not going to write a love you letter. You have to write to do it. So everybody in whose committee I am a member, they have come to, to this. And I'm going to be working with, uh, in the College of Engineering with, the new, um, with some new professors working on this, on how to improve their teaching techniques, you know, from, from this. Um, and I think that uh, it's a wonderful thing to, for the promotion process and to document the teaching. And the most important area, and this is the most important for me as a, as a teacher, to educate. I think that is my responsibility to educate my colleagues about the, import, the importance of teaching. And with the self-assessment, I mean, nobody is going to be against looking at what you have done through the years assessing yourself in different classes with different people. I do teacher training with the dual language immersion. And believe me, every single time I walk into a classroom or even today, I think of every single, every single comment I have received in terms of how I can improve my teaching. You know? And uh, let me see. And we will continue doing some research. And, um, oh, oh, oh. So, SATS, it is a wonderful tool to improve teaching, but, um, oh, I'm sorry. But uh, we need to, okay, I'm going to put just a plan B, D. D. Nothing works, right? from the wherever. From current slide, and I cannot read, you see. Here? This one? Oh, 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 oh. No, it doesn't like me. Yeah. Well, there are some warnings. So this is the last slide. There are some warnings about the self-assessment of teaching. Some of the problems that they have found is that people are not um, critical enough about their own teaching. So instead of writing a love letter, they write an I love me letter. <laughs> yeah, so we have, to, we have to be careful and balance. And, and I encourage you, if you follow this model to invite people from other disciplines. I don't know in which disciplines you are, but I'm in languages. I want a physics professor to come and observe my class. 
You know, like I wanted a philosopher to come and, and the philosopher was the one who said that my class is too structured. I said, okay, whatever. I'm keeping that for the future. I'm just keeping that for the future. It will be a two page response. But no, no, Winky is not a member of my committee. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. You know, when I send the syllabus, I send um, the lesson plan and I write down the context of the class. So this is the learning objective. So I give, I hand in a, um, a hard copy of the PowerPoint to them so they can see. So I write like a synopsis of what, we, what are the readings, what are the different readings that we are going to talk about. And this is wonderful that you asked me because the first time they came to observe my class, I didn't provide that information for the observers so they didn't know what students had to do. So I learned by one of the comments that I had to provide some background information for them. So we're going to cover three chapters. This is what the, the, the chapters are about this and this and this and this. And even though uh, um, the class is a two hour and a half um, session, you have to be there just for, for half of the session. So at the end, this is what we are going to accomplish. So yes, I provide all that synopsis, yeah. Good question. I think that is great. Whenever I evaluate somebody else, I make sure that I get that stuff from them yeah. beforehand, yeah. and then have a debrief before you know get their reactions kind of before I write the letter. Do you have a but debrief? We don't. Ha I don't have a debrief because I do. I I watch the video by myself, and then I send them the positive and, mm -hmm. and areas of improvement, they give, me, they give me that back. So we don't have a debriefing session. We haven't been, nobody has said, let's talk about this. No, because it's all self-reflection. And they agree or they don't agree with you. And they say, you know, I think that you are missing this part. And they know all my colleagues because I, dr I address every single comment they make. I, and you know, so in my file for promotion, there is a, um, a SAT, the lesson plan, the context, and the, the, the actual copies that they either email me or uh, wrote during the observation. So I attach those as, as a piece of documentation. Yeah, everything, everything. So it's like little, this little, like, uh, We have time for more questions. We have five minutes. So please, just pretend that you like it. Yes. So just more of a comment, I guess. Um, I think that's the really unique thing about this is that you, it's so natural for us to want to go straight to the person and say, how did I do? How did I do? But in actuality, when you take that time to assess your teaching and observe what you've done, you discover what your beliefs about your teaching are and what you see and what you notice before you look at what your colleagues see and what they believe. And you can, it keeps you from automatically assuming that what they're saying is right, you know? Yeah. That you can believe in your own teaching philosophy and, and support that as well. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Tempe. And I think that um, the main thing that we are missing, and I have been in the, in the teaching business for more than what do you think? I think that the biggest thing that we um, face is that we lecture. We don't, our activities are not student center, are teaching center. I think that if we flip that, if we change that, we will be better teachers, we will, the responsibility won't be 
or not. But whenever I go to the classroom and I observe tons of teachers every single year, the biggest problem is that they do everything. And I said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. You are not the one who needs to know. You already know the stuff, right? Like uh, this morning, you know, they, she knows the stuff. Students are the ones who need to learn that stuff, right? So if we, if we make this, this change, um, I think that it will be great for us. So whenever I'm going to observe someone who is not familiar with the methodology, I invite him or her to my class so that she or he can see the different strategies and what I expect from a class, right? And, um, and I'm very, very grateful when I go, like when I went to Francois's class and I saw every single thing that I did, I said, yes, great, this is, this is working, you know? Everything. I do, uh, I use the big post-its. Students stand up and they walk around and I do walking galleries and I do jigsaws and I do debates. Well, they have been in my classes in both lecturing and non-lecturing classes, so. One more question? No, do we have? Time for one more question? Two more questions or two minutes? Okay. Two more one minute questions. <laughs> Come on. Yes. So you had one time you were observed with a few faculty, and then another point in time you had other faculty. My department had said it wouldn't be bad to have that same person come back like a year later if you teach the class once a year have the re re-video of that course, show them how you implemented everything, have them do that. What are your thoughts about building a relationship with having a few people come back to every class and observe how you've done it and changed over time because of all that feedback? It, it and sounds... watching your teaching and maybe yeah. really reflecting on who you are and what you're like. I think that it, it is a wonderful, a wonderful idea. Unfortunately, we don't have to Time That's that we don't have time, but with this, you share this with other members of your your committee, so they can see that you have addressed okay. and have improved the areas that they suggested, and still you are still showing some growth. That's what yeah. I was hoping for because I was like, how do I get them to go teach me back? Mm. It's an awful big commitment to ask them small time. And uh, someone on the other side. I mean, if you, tell, if you tell a candidate, you have to give me a lesson plan, be more specific. You need learning objectives. Or I think that it would be wonderful if you have a, a wrap-up uh, activity. And still, you go back and the person doesn't do it. Are you going to repeat it? You know, but in the big picture, we are the ones who need to improve our teaching. So I think that this model serves to that type of objective. No more questions, Kevin? No more questions, comments, suggestions? No? Well, thank you very much for coming. And let me know if you need something. I will be very happy to, to share the materials with you. If you give me credit, because I'm facing some plagiarism problems with a colleague of mine. So I have the materials ready to be shared. but. Uh, it says, please do not copy without permission. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for coming.